Hello to all of you and welcome to yet another episode of the Behind the Frame series. And in this episode, I'm gonna be going through one of my favorite images from Amboseli in a trip that I hosted at the beginning of this year. As some of you may know and have seen already, throughout this series, we go through these images, we go through our editing process, and hopefully you guys will be able to take one or two things away from it. So with that being said, let's get stuck into it. So as I mentioned, I'm doing one of my favorite images from Amboseli and the beauty, one of the things that everyone who goes to Amboseli that they talk about is the famous dry lake bed. And there is nothing more insane than getting a group of elephants on that lake bed. Um, because what's awesome about that, you're able to jump out of your vehicle, get nice and low, sit nice and tight to your vehicle, and you can then capture these beautiful, stunning images from eye level which is an absolute game changer. So with that being said, let me jump straight into it and explain my image to you guys a little bit here. Let me just clear this quickly. There we go. So firstly, let's jump into a few specs about this image. Firstly, if you come and look in my top right, top left over here, obviously we took this, this image, you know, midday. There was plenty of light. Um, so Obviously, shooting in aperture priority, you, that's, a, that's why my shutter speed is absolutely through the roof here. Lots of sunlight, um, the camera's trying to keep some of that sun out. I was shooting at 2.8, the reason for that is I wanted to get this beautiful sort of um, depth of field like this where it's nice and blurry, nice and blurry background, get our elephants in focus and take it from there. Once again, ISO nice and low, and that comes down to the fact that we had some beautiful sunlight. So. Let's get straight into the edit here. Now my thoughts are with this image, obviously I absolutely love the image because of the spacing that we've got here. We've got very nice spacing between all of these four elephants. We have a nice balance with this sort of negative space here that they are walking into. Um, and from here, we are gonna jump straight into it. Now in terms of an edit, there's not too much I need to do here. I have already straightened my angle, or sorry, straightened my horizon rather. Um, I've just straightened that a little bit. In terms of my crop, there's nothing really I'm going to change. Possibly just give a little bit of extra space on the left there and the roundabout there. Alrighty, so generally with my sort of um, flow and my editing process, some of you may know this already, I like to go in the broad terms of a glo crop, global adjustments, and then my local adjustments. My global adjustments, I make that in the basic panel over here throughout or, or, and adjust the entire image with my settings or the things that I'm changing. Over and above that, once I'm done with that, I then get a little bit more specific with masks and add that where I need to. So let me show you what I mean. Jumping here into the basic panel, first thing I'm looking to do here, let's have a look here, let's see what exposure, I don't wanna blow it too much. Um, we've already got a relatively bright image, so I'm probably gonna just bump it up literally by not even a third, but somewhere around there. I just wanna, I love the idea here of a nice bright image. Um, we, we're gonna try and bring these tones down specifically, the blues, the oranges, we're gonna work that a little bit specifically just now. So for now, I'm just going with about a third overexposed. I then come down here to my bottom. I, I usually start off with the blacks and work my way up. Um, and I usually just play in here just to stretch my histogram a little bit, so I'm gonna, pull these blacks down ever so slightly here. This is just a way for us to punch in some contrast. So again, as some of you may have heard from me before, I love to get these, you know, there's certain things that will always draw our viewers' eyes to something. So for example, brightness, sharpness, contrast, uh, these are the type of things that are gonna draw your viewers' eyes. So if you can get your subject to, I always say, win in those categories, that's where your, your viewers' eyes are gonna go, and that's what you want, that's what you want. You want them to look at your subject. You don't want them stretching out all over. So we're gonna keep that in mind as we edit along here. All right, so like I say, we've thrown in a bit of contrast now into this entire image. I'm bringing my shadows down, a nice sort of S curve. Have a look, keep an eye on that histogram. As I'm moving these around, you'll see that histogram stretching out a little bit. So somewhere around about there. Now very little adjustments we've made already. Have a look at how we're starting to get a bit more punchiness, but more contrast into the image. Happy days. All right, a nice, another nice thing here, obviously with all the texture on the, the dry bed or the lake bed over here, obviously our elephants as well. 
It's not a bad idea to throw some general texture into the image just to get it popping a bit more. Clarity, I'm obsessed with clarity, I love it. It's always a great thing. It, it adds beautiful contrast into our edges and our sort of um, contrasting parts here. It, it, it's, it's stunning, I love it. If I zoom in here, for example, I'm gonna go very extreme here for the sake of it, in fact. And let me take that all the way. You'll see how it adds contrast into those edges over there. Loses contrast, pumps the contrast. And we love that. It also just brings some sharpness and, oh, I love it. All right, so that's good. Dehaze, I don't think we need to do too much here. Um, we managed to get that 2.8 nicely on these elephants. They're nice and sharp. Happy days. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come down into my tone curve here. I like to add tone curve, or, or contrast rather, in my tone curve, as opposed to the general slider here. This throws contrast um, over the entire image. And what I like more about doing it in the cone, to, tone curve, sorry, is that allows us to be a little bit more specific and get in there into specific tones and add that contrast where we want to. So for example, in this type of situation, um, definitely in these lights, we've got lots of lights over here. Let's see what happens here when we stretch in these lights here. You see there how it just brings it nice and bright, makes it nice and bright for us over there. I'm gonna literally just add a little bit and I'm gonna go the opposite way with my darks here. Get some really nice punchy contrast in there. If we go and tick this on and off, have a look here. Subtle adjustment, especially in the elephants here. Subtle adjustment, but we've got nice contrast. And if we go before and after, all of a sudden look at the difference that we've got literally from a couple of adjustments. Happy days. Now the next thing I want to do here is um, I definitely want to try and emphasize a little bit of this blue over here as well as this orange, um, these sort of colors that we have in this image. Obviously I don't want to go overboard with that, but a nice way to go about that is if I bring down this panel for us over here in our HSL for our hue saturation luminance, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to grab the blue slider and let's see if we bring that up. For extreme, obviously that's what we're doing, all right? What we can see from this though is it's obviously not picking up uh, a lot of these tones here in the middle. So we will work on that now. But for now, let's just work on bringing this blue up a little bit, just get a nice bit of punchiness. Now a great little tip here that um, often works well when you're wanting to add, emphasize a little bit of color, those types of things. If you're not too sure, I mean, I have no idea if this is magenta, purple, whatever it may be. But in that case, we can come and grab this little, um, pointer over here and I'm just going to drag it down to wherever we want to add some color. So let's say we wanted to add some color over here. Have a look now how that's going to work specifically on tone. So all of a sudden we see that there is purple um, in here. If we come in we bring it all the way to this side we carry on going some more purple. Okay so with that in mind we can click that off. We know that we want to work on blue and on purple. All right. So let's say we bring our blues up because those are the colors we wanted to work on there. And now if we grab our purples, have a look how it's very subtly changing the colors in the background here. You'll see how it's emphasizing them a little bit, just bringing them out ever so slightly. So I'm literally wanting to do something like that. If we go and switch this on and off, have a look there. You see, just a little bit of punchiness, bringing out that blue sky. We don't want to overdo it. Um, and something along those lines. Possibly with my oranges here, they're beautiful complementary colors, blues, oranges, and purples. Um, so if we do go and pump that up ever so slightly, saturation can run away from us very quickly. Um, so I do not want to overdo it. Um, so literally somewhere over there. And we hold that in and out. Very subtle adjustment, but we've gone and made this image ever so slightly punchier. There's now life in here, there's colors. Happy days, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. All right, next one, I'm gonna jump down into my detail over here. Um, I'm just gonna drag this. I'm gonna grab this little block, put it over off this main female in the front here. Um, whenever you're sharpening an image, I always like to hold in uh, my option key and pull this masking just so that I'm more specific about what is being sharpened. So in this case, whatever is white is gonna be sharpened. That's where the sharpening will be applied. Obviously, I want that to be as much on my elephants as possible and as little around the rest of the image. So around about there, that's where I want to be. Now I can go ahead. I can increase my sharpening a little bit. I can bring up my radius ever so slightly and my detail ever so slightly. 
All right. And at that point now, I'm pretty much happy and I think we've made some beautiful global adjustments to the entire image. Happy days, that's what we want to do. If we go and we look at it before and after here, this is what we're working with. You can see beautiful, beautiful punchiness, contrast, colors, happy days. Now the next thing I want to work on is like I mentioned to you, my local adjustments. I want to go in there with some specific masks, add that in where I can and possibly just try and pull those viewers' eyes, my viewers' eyes, to what I want them to see. All right, so let's see what we can do. I don't think there's gonna to be too much for us to do here. Possibly, I'm looking here, the shadows, I wanna work on that a bit. Um, and maybe just a nice big radial gradient, pulling everyone's eyes into there. So let's see what we can work with, all right. Um, first thing, let's try and select subject, and let's see what this does. Usually quite good, all right, that's not too bad. Uh, we can just quickly go and remove some of the stuff in the middle, so those three buttons there. No, wait, let me double check here, subtract. Uh, I just want to subtract, subtract with a brush quickly. I'm going to bring up my flow and density so that application of that brush is um, sort of, uh, how do I say it, um, is at 100%. So if I go and brush that off now, you can see how nicely that disappears. If my flow and density are a lot lower, I'm going to have to brush over that a few times in order for that application to be applied. You'll see, we will be brushing here forever. <laughs> so with that being said, like I said, let's just get that flow density up. Uh, we're gonna be a little bit more rough with this. We don't have to be so specific, but I just wanna get some of these main areas over here um, out of our edit. We'll go in between the elephants here, round about there. Uh, if I want to move across my screen now, I'm just holding in my screen or my space bar and coming in between here. Like I say, not going to be very specific here, but sort of just throwing it in between to around about there. All right, something like that. Um, obviously, like I say, we could be a lot more, um, what's the word, particular about getting in and between at all but that will do the job for now. Now the main thing I want to do here, like I said, I'm going to press O for overlay and just to remove that red over there so I can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm then going to, like I say, just try and bump up some shadows over here. So let's see if we go extreme, that's what we're working with. So of course, beautiful. Oh, we're going to bring it to light now. So we're going to just bring that back ever so slightly um, so that it's not unnatural. There are shadows there, we don't want to lose those but I think somewhere there really brings that nicely to life. If I go down, I bring my blacks. This is often a nice little thing for me. I'll, if I have to, I'll throw my shadows up nice and high and then just bring the blacks down so that you, you don't lose the contrast that is created. So what I mean by that, let's say here, if we just bring these blacks down, we create a nice contrast, get those shadows up a bit. Boom, bada, bing, looking good. Let's go switch this on and off. Have a look at that difference. Game changer. Game changer, just brings those elephants to life. Um, another thing, while we are on the elephants here, um, clarity, like I told you guys, I love it. Clarity always brings in beautiful texture and um, sort of contrast on our edges. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of sharpness to around about there. Once again, let's just switch this on and off. Make sure that we're not running away with it. Oh, goodness. Uh, a nice little thing to, to hit on your laptops. Um, you can either press Y as the shortcut, or if you come down here, you get these two little Ys like this. Hit that once, and you get to see your image before and after. And this just kind of keeps track so that you don't necessarily run away with your image. Um, I'm personally one, I like to keep it as simple as possible. I don't like to push it too much. If you prefer to do that, absolutely go for it. But this is a great way for you to keep an eye on your original image versus your after image. And in that case, something that is bothering me a little bit here, I think I've pushed the saturation ever so slightly. So with that being said, I'm gonna go into my basic panel um, and I'm gonna bring saturation down just a touch here. That it doesn't get overboard to around about minus four. And if we eat before and after guys, we are certainly getting there. Last little adjustment I'm gonna do here, um, I'm gonna come in with a radial gradient and this is something that I often do on pretty much all of my images. I'm going to draw a nice big one for us over here, stretching it as far as possible. And I'm going to pull that over our elephants over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and invert this. 
So wherever the red is, that's where our adjustment is being applied. So with that in mind, just going to try and push this towards our elephants ever so slightly. So if we, for example, if I go extreme, this is what we're doing. You can see how we're just pushing the viewer's eyes towards our elephants. So we're going to bring that back now to a point that is not overly done, but where it will be visible for people to see, not necessarily straight up. But if I do this, have a look now how we've got a beautiful push and pull. It's almost like your eyes are being pushed to the elephants over here, and at the same time, you're being pulled away from that area. Um, and if I flick that on and off, just have a look there how you push straight towards those elephants. Happy days. And I think, guys, literally from what we started off with, give it a second while it loads for us over here. Um, like I said, given what we were started with or what we started with, um, I kept, like, whenever I'm editing my image, I like to keep those certain things in mind. I start off with my crop, my global, and my local adjustments. And I want to try and get as much sharpness, as much brightness, as much contrast, texture, whatever it may be, onto my subject so that I'm drawing those eyes. So with the image having loaded, that is what our final image is. So yeah, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that that was something that helps you and that you can take one or two tricks away from that. If you happen to have any questions on any of the editing that I did do over here, please feel free to get in touch with me. And the same goes for any of our images that you ever see on our profiles, whatever it may be. If you like an image, if you wonder how did we get, how did we get to that, get in touch with us and we'll jump onto more of these. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I will speak to you guys again soon. Cheers, everyone.